I'm going to ask now another activist, uh, the CEO of SHARP, the Society for Human Rights and Prisoners' Aid, to come up to the microphone, perhaps, and explain what they're doing um, in, in aid of the Afghan refugees. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate all the organizers of this conference. And uh, I would really appreciate uh, to add this very important session of expulsion of refugees in this conference. And uh, we are here, we are gathered here to pay homage to a star icon, Miss Asma Jangir, who inspires us all and she was the champion of human rights, democracy, and human rights. Thank you very much. Most of the things have been already said by my colleagues, but uh, I have got only five minutes to talk about expulsion of, of, of Afghan refugees, but the history is so long. Uh, we have been hosting generously to Afghan refugees from last 40 years, and all the government and people of Pakistan has contributed and sacrificed their resources, their places, their homes, shared everything with Afghan refugees. But uh, the things happening, developing right now, is not right time and the right way to send them as enemies. I mean, if we don't sit with the international community, with the sport, we have been accommodating them for years. It would add pressure, it would not go in our ways if we like send them as uh, forcefully as we are doing. And there are policies uh, which are not discussed or uh, uh, like not properly planned for durable solution in this region. I wish we could have discussed all these things with the international colleagues and international community, uh, UN uh, uh, systems, A proper planning could have been done, but as Afridi Saab mentioned, we have a, a couple of waves of Afghan refugees who came to Pakistan. The first wave was in our, our late 70s and early 80s, and the second was in 90s, and third was in 20, uh, 2000. And the last wave after regime change in Kabul was in 2021, where nearly 700,000 Afghans came to Pakistan, but unfortunately we don't had any policy how to accommodate them, provide them legal assistance, registration, or anything. And they have been like waiting for their fate. And uh, this also uh, uh, put a question mark on international community because most of the people who came in Pakistan in last uh, 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 wave in 2021, they came here on the promises of international community. Many high commissions, embassies, or international organization with whom these Afghans were working. And many of them were women, uh, civil society actors, uh, uh, sportswomen, and other colleagues. But, you know, Pakistan doesn't have any law. And still we are accommodating millions of Afghan refugees. But this is, this is the right time to sit with the international community and place some recommendation and suggestions to create flexible re visa regime to speed up their cases which are delayed uh, in other countries. They are waiting for resettlement. Unfortunately, here in, uh, if you see that Afghans' fate have been not only here in this region, they have never been given that uh, opportunity. They can only repatriate. They are very limited of re resettlement for them. There is no integration as we don't have any law. And their issues are escalating. There and uh, especially women and children are suffering a lot. There is no job opportunities here for them. And uh, we are working in Afghanistan as well. And there is uh, no infrastructure, proper infrastructure, schools, hospitals, things like that in Afghanistan. If we are uh, sending them like that forcefully, that might create statelessness for the people who because they don't have ID card or registration or registration here. And when they go back, they might not have those documentation and passports or whatever. The, uh, so we really need, it's very sensitive matter. And uh, we are sharing border with Afghanistan and we have to live with them uh, next, like how many years. That's why we should not send them as 
enemies, we should send them as friends and we should invest resources, put some cause nearly 64% of the people, uh, uh, young people in Afghan communities, we need to add resources, bring more resource allocation for skill development. So if they go back to Afghanistan, if they stay here or travel to any other country, they must have some sk skills to contribute. And we have been lacking that we couldn't get any uh, 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 benefits from these communities because they have rich culture, rich history, and they have been positively contributing in Pakistan's economy. So if we don't take consideration or think wisely at this time, they might be like going in the hands of other people who can use them in wrongful activities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, sir. I, I much appreciate your very practical suggestion. And I hope the diplomats and the UN organizations that are here today will consider these very practical um, uh, efforts to try and improve the situation.